if we really wanted to stay strictly in the space holding the healing space without indulging at all, then technically it would just feel like love and acceptance and like a melting sensation of the fiery nature of the thoughts and the feelings. They would cool and they would melt into the fabric of your awareness and your love and your acceptance and your cosmic heart. Hello. Um, Bentinho, please, um, could you uh, share your vision in what is the difference um, between indulging in a victim story or holding space for a wounded or shamed or rejected part of uh, your consciousness? Sweet. Indulgence is when you think about it and you are swayed into new beliefs and new feelings about it. And then you're not holding space, you're indulging. Holding space doesn't create any new feeling in response to the old feelings that arise. If anything, it clears them and it replaces them with a sense of greater love, acceptance, forgiveness, and healing. So if while you think you are holding space for shame or woundedness or trauma or the inner child not getting what it wants or the victim experiences you feel you've had or whatever it might be, whatever sense of hurt you think you're allowing space for, if your space holding is replaced by further argument, now to some degree, of course, you want to allow your mind to kind of play out that story maybe or take on both sides of the argument and so forth. So that can happen. But if it's creating like more and more antagonism, more and more opposition, if it's creating more and more thought forms and new feelings about it, as opposed to it's sort of rising up and then melting into a greater sense of wholeness and love and ease and healing and forgiveness and understanding and acceptance, that's space holding. Indulgence is continuing the argument. Does it make sense? And you gotta, you gotta be really alert for this when you do this because it's tricky. It's very easy to indulge. It's almost always safe to assume there's some indulgence happening when we allow space for our old self, for our beliefs and so forth. So to a degree it's okay and that too must be accepted. It's the process we go through. But technically speaking, if we really wanted to stay strictly in the space holding, the healing space, without indulging at all, then technically it would just feel like love and acceptance and like a melting sensation of the fiery nature of the thoughts and the feelings. They would cool and they would melt into the fabric of your awareness and your love and your acceptance and your cosmic heart. And I'm asking is because sometimes it feels tricky when when these uh, hidden parts or underlying parts surface, and and uh, I I tend to get uh, I don't I don't want to say stuck, but like in 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 this vibration, and um, uh, I used to try to to um, go into the light as fast as possible. And, uh, and I've been realizing that has been more an avoidance and not owning this. this. Yes, change that. You see if you can change that from the, the knee-jerk guttural reaction to like, oh, let me go into the light as fast as possible, which means you're leaving part of yourself behind. You're creating... You're partitioning yourself, like I was saying to a previous questioner about the hot air balloon and the sandbags. If, if you have this sort of non-acceptant reaction, fear-based reaction towards your negative thoughts, and you're like, no, let me focus on the light, let me focus on the light, every once in a while that can work, but usually it's not 
the most holistic, direct approach. So instead of, let me go into the light, try to replace that with, let me see that all of this is the light. Because then you include everything. You're not running away with a small portion of yourself trying to feverishly hold on to the light when the rest of you secretly suffers. And you're like, no, but, but look at the light. Look at, oh my God, so much light here. You know, so much light. And then at the end of the day, you're still a panic, stressful mess, living in angst. Instead, a fear comes up. <sighs> Instead of, let me go to the light, say, let me remember, accept and see. Let me try to see. Let me do my best to see how this is the light. And you're reintegrating yourself. You're unpartitioning yourself. You become whole again. The light is whole. Wholeness is light. There is no shadow in the light, do you know? Darkness and light are not two separate places. It's just the absence of light that we perceive as darkness or shadow. But in the nature of light, everything is illuminated equally. So the real brave and courageous next step for someone in a face like what you're describing would be to embrace everything as the light, not just to escape into the light with a portion of yourself but to embrace all of yourself as the light. And you can only do this to the degree that you're ready for it. You will only do this to the degree that you're ready to face that, to accept that you're all of these things and that that's okay. All of these things are made of light. And that you can trust yourself. You won't act like a dark Lord when you're embracing the darkness also as the light. The light will transfigure that darkness. It will remove the darkness. But if you keep escaping to this little corner in the sky with a little portion of your mind feverishly focused on holding on to the light, you still believe there's darkness down there. And it's always going to pull you back because you believe it's there. So it's much better to eliminate that belief in darkness altogether by seeing directly and clearly out of your own courage and willingness how everything is made of light. Everything is illuminated by that same awareness equally. There is no distinction, ultimately. So you can come to a full and willing embrace of all of yourself as the light. And you don't have to escape into the light anymore. You don't have to fear the triggers that arise as much. They might still feel uncomfortable because they still have some notion of untruth to them. And then you can apply the work. You can apply the light to that. But you don't have to escape. The true escape is to see it all as light including the parts that want to linger behind, the escapism part of you too, the part that makes something wrong and something positive. The one blinks neither at the dark nor the light. It's all source. It's all light. Easier said than done, but that is the idea.